Hello YouTube, uh, my name is Chris and I'm going to be giving you a tutorial on how to do a ramped slow-mo using After Effects CC 2014. Um, I've got my After Effects open here and let's get started. Um, I'm using CC like I said, but uh, you can. This, it works pretty much the same way with CS6, CS5, CS5.5. There's a lot of versions. I think I've been I've been doing it the same way ever since like CS3. So it's all pretty much the same, but let's get started. So first thing, once you have After Effects open, is you want to bring in a new composition. So we're going to say composition, new composition. Um, we're going to want 60 frames a second, which is what I filmed this clip in, but it's also really good for slow-mo. Um, uh, 1280 by 720, that all looks good. You can name the composition, say test or something. Duration looks good, we say okay. Okay, so once you've created a composition, you want to bring in the clip that you want to slow-mo. Um, we're gonna say import file, and my clip's right on the desktop right here. This is a pretty sweet skateboarding clip. Uh, oh, you can do you can ramp slow mo pretty much anything. Um, and what a ramp slow mo is is like instead of a clip that's sort of like split into two. The first part of the clip it's going 100% speed, and then the next it's going 50% speed. Instead of that hard drastic change in speed from like regular time to slow-mo, it kind of eases into the slow-mo. Um, and you'll see in a few minutes here, if you look at it as a graph, that it's kind of rounded and it's smoother. It's a smoother transition into a slow-mo. So they're really cool. Um, they're used a lot in action videos. Um, I've seen a lot in skateboarding. So I'm just, that's how I learned it is doing skateboarding. So that's what I'm gonna use. Here it is right here, the clip. What you want to do is bring it from your project tab down into your composition. You notice when I drag it in there, it makes it visible right here in the program window. Um, so that's it all the way through. Pretty cool, I guess. Um, anyways, so to begin doing a ramp slow-mo, you want to right click on the clip in your composition and go up to time and then you say enable time remapping. So when you do this, you get this uh, time remap thing that comes up right here and you see this little white diamond, that's a keyframe. And that's a good thing, you want that. Um, I usually use about four keyframes to do a ramp slow-mo and you'll see why in a second. What I'm gonna do is drag this, my cursor here, my playhead to the point where I want the slow motion to begin. So I usually like to do it right, maybe right after a pop or right before the pop of the board or something, at least when I'm doing skateboarding, so maybe like right there. And then you're gonna come over here to this keyframe button, press keyframe. So now I have two keyframes. Next step is to find where you want the slow motion to end. So I don't know about you, but it might be cool if maybe he was grinding the entire rail in slow motion and then right when he's about to land it goes back to regular motion or something so in that case I would probably stop it about here ish add another keyframe and then I'm gonna add a keyframe at the very end to kind of put an end cap on this entire sequence and I believe if, see my clip goes a little longer than this 20 second composition, but it, I believe it, if it's shorter that it will automatically put an end one on there for you, just like it put my beginning one on there for me. Um, so here we go. Now that I have my keyframes, uh, I believe you, yep, I'm gonna click on time remap down here and they're all gonna highlight. And then I'm gonna go up to this little grid looking thing, it's called your graph editor, and I'm gonna click on it. And notice that it creates this line. And this is not the line we want. We want the line to be completely horizontal. So if you go down here next to the little eye icon, there's one that looks like a little uh, chart that says choose graph type and options. You click that and you go up to edit speed graph. Right now it's on value graph by default. It may be on your computer as well. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be, but on this computer it's default. Uh, 
setting is edit value graph, but we want edit speed graph. So that's what I'm gonna change my option to. Now we got this horizontal line. And this is where you're gonna see those smooth curves um, that give us a really cool ramped slow-mo effect. Um, so the first time I was messing with this, it was kind of difficult to, to understand, but basically what you wanna do is grab this is the section between this keyframe and this keyframe that is going to be slow-mo. So in order to change that um, speed in between those keyframes, you want to drag the line from outside on the right of the second keyframe. So I'm going to drag this down and notice how we get kind of a, a U shape. So you get this, when it looks like this, you can just kind of drag it uh, out like that. So once you have it like this, you can kind of start to see the curve that we want. This, this is, if you think about it visually, this is what we're looking for. Um, and then what I do is click on the corners of here, and you can pull down from that little, uh, little handle and try and get these edges looking really smooth. Kind of mess with them. Um, Maybe something like that, maybe something like that. You could you could make all kinds of shapes, you know, you could do something crazy. And see this is, you know, it's going almost down below zero. I don't even know what that does. I think it might like reverse the clip or something. But, so we get a shape like this. And what this means is as long this playhead where this line is, this is about normal speed, normal speed, normal speed, normal speed. Now it's going to slowly start slowing down, slow, 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 even slower, even slower. And right here is where it's going to be at its slowest speed, at about 0.4, which is less than 50% speed. So it's going less than, you know, half regular uh, speed. Um, and then it goes up gradually, gradually, gradually until it levels back out to regular time again. So, like I said, you can do all kinds of different shapes. If I did this one, it would mean that uh, right here at the peak, you know, it's going to be really, really slow. If you, um, if you spread your keyframes out a lot and then you were to drag down, um, you can get some really deep troughs there. That means you're getting some really slow, um, some really slow effect. Um, so once you have the shape that you want, and just for simplicity purposes, I'm just going to kind of go with what I've got here. Um, what I like to do is kind of trim off this excess. I think it's um, B for like the beginning point where you want this clip to, uh, to start. So I'd say about, you know, right before he rolls up or something. And then N for end, yeah, after he rolls away. So that all this excess, you know, it's just storage that I want to save. You know, I don't want a clip that's that big. I just want the stuff that's slow mode, and that's it. Um, so once you have that, that this is your work area in between these these uh, blue grayish bars here. I'm going to go to composition, and you could preview it if you want. You can go to preview RAM preview. And it'll render, let's bring it back here. Actually, let's see, preview, RAM preview. And it'll render out all the frames and it will give you audio as well. Um, so this is what this slumbo is gonna look like. So pretty cool. That's pretty much what I was going for. If I was really gonna try and perfect this, I would spend a little more time on it and just try and get my keyframes exact and get the right timing, especially if I'm editing to like a song or something and I wanna get it on beat. So that's what I would do if I had a little more time to do this. Um, but once, once you got it looking good, it's just the way you want it, you go back up to composition and you say add to render cue. And it's gonna give you this uh, render cue tab and you have a couple of options down here. Render settings, you usually leave at best settings. I don't ever really touch that one. Where it says output module, and it says lossless, that is clickable, and you can click that. And you just want to make sure that your output 
uh, or your audio is being outputted. Um, I might change this to like 32. I think that's a little bit higher quality than 16 bit. Um, but I believe in CS6 and earlier versions that the audio does not uh, output by default, so you have to go in and manually change that. In CC, it's already, it's already good. Uh, so this will have audio when I render it and export it. But uh, in earlier versions, you definitely want to check and make sure that that will happen. So I'll say OK. I'm going to say Output 2. Uh, we'll say test, and we'll just say desktop, and we'll say test ramp finished. Or, well, that's not right. Finished. 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 Sure. We say save, and we say render. And depending on how long your clip is, you know, it might take anywhere from 10 seconds to a minute or two. So when you hear that little bell, that means it's done rendering. And if I go to my desktop, test ramped finished. So I'm going to uh, just leave you with the final uh, finished product of this. And uh, go ahead and try it yourself. It's a lot of fun. Um, After Effects CC 2014 is what I'm using. So uh, get out there, go skate. Go get some clips or whatever you do action-wise. It's a lot of fun. Be sure to subscribe, like, comment, share, all that good jazz. Um, and that's it, guys. Thanks a lot.